A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. During the years of unrest that followed the Civil War, a powerful secret organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up in the western United States. Its members were to be found everywhere, defying the law or using the law for their own purposes, working toward the ultimate goal of revolt and the foundation of a despotic empire. It was the masked rider of the plains who led the fight against this band of outlaws and traitors, and for once his great strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness were taxed to the utmost in the cause of democracy. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're on the trail of the Black Arrow. Hail, Silver! Hey! Torlock, finally captured by the Lone Ranger, stood heavily guarded on the train that was to take him to Washington. While this cruel leader of the Black Arrow pleaded in fear which bordered on hysteria, he clutched at his throat in a spasm of choking coughs and then fell lifeless to the floor. The unknown leaders in the nation's capital, those traitors who headed the Black Arrow, the men whom Torlock feared, had somehow managed to poison him through one of their accomplices and effectively seal his lips. Later that night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were talking in their camp. Tonto, I thought when we got Torlock, we'd reached the end of our fight against the Black Arrow. Hmm, now we got to start all over. Bill Cody said that Torlock was deathly afraid of being taken to Washington. Not right. He must have known of someone in Washington who gave orders to the Black Arrow. Color plenty high in government. I wonder what the president will say when he learns what happened. How soon him know that? The news was to be sent by telegraph. He should hear it in Washington sometime this morning. get further details later, Mr. President. I thought you'd want to know this at once. Little more can be told. Torlock was captured, and the Lone Ranger did his part. I I hoped, even though I felt such hope was futile, that Torlock would prove to be the leader of this, this outrageous plot against our government. By the way, I think a young lady is waiting in the outer room. I'm already late for the appointment I made with her. As you leave, ask her to step in. Very well. The president will see you now. Thank you. Come over here and sit down, won't you? Thank you, sir. That's better. You've been working in one of our offices for some time, haven't you? Yes, sir. I've been in the government service for eight years. Tell me about yourself. Uh, about myself? There's nothing to tell, Mr. President. You were born in Texas, weren't you? Yes. Your parents uh, were among the first to settle there. There are quite a few facts here about you, my dear. Uh, are there? Didn't you like the West? Oh, I love... No. No, I despise the West. That's odd. You've been invaluable to the United States on several occasions. Some of the diplomatic work you've done was worthy of an ambassador. 
You've shown great ingenuity in carrying out certain missions to which you were assigned. Thank you, sir. I did have another assignment for you. Whatever it is, sir, I'll do my best. It's a difficult one. Possibly dangerous. I'm not afraid of danger. I have no family to worry about me. No relatives of any sort? Not, not now. Not even in Texas? No, sir. Tell me this, my dear. Have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? Yes. You have heard of his work in connection with the Legion of the Black Owl? Against the Legion? Well, yes, I've heard of it. Please read this message. It came this morning by the electric telegraph. Torlock captured. Poisoned. Yes, sir, I've read it. Have you no reaction to it? No thoughts? You, you want to hear them? Please. Yes, I have thoughts. I didn't think Torlock could live long enough to tell anything to involve the men above him. Your position has made it possible for you to follow the events in the West, especially those in connection with the Black Arrow. Now, why did you think Torlock would be killed before he could talk? Because Torlock was not the leader of the Black Arrow. He was just following orders. And now what will happen? Someone else will undoubtedly take his place to follow orders. Exactly. And that is why I want you to go to Texas. I, I'm to go to Texas? Yes. And without letting the Lone Ranger or anyone else know who you are, you're to learn all you can. You're to mingle with the people, renew old acquaintances, pick up the threads of the life you left ten years ago. Give what aid you can to the Lone Ranger, but above all, learn who takes Torlock's place and who, here in Washington, sends that man instructions. I... I'm sorry, sir. I would do anything else. Anything else in all the world to help my country. But but I cannot go back to Texas. You... you cannot? No. No, I can't. But I don't understand. Not even to help the Lone Ranger. Not even to save his life. I can't go back to Texas. I, I used to love the state, the whole West. The plains and the mountains. The valleys and the endless stretch of land. Now, now I hate it. I despise it. The West and the things that happened there make me remember that... I'll tell you what happened. Several years ago, I was riding towards Grant's Pass one afternoon. It was one of those glorious days. It seemed that one could see for miles in every direction. I knew that my brother, a Texas Ranger, and some of his friends would come through Grant's Pass that day, and I was riding, hoping to meet them. I hadn't seen Bob for some time. And then, suddenly, there were gunfire. I reined up, listened, with an increased feeling of something clutching at my heart and throat. I couldn't be sure, but the gunfire seemed to come from Grant's Pass. And then, then as suddenly it began, it stopped. There was nothing but silence. I strained my ears. I thought I heard hoofbeats going away, but I couldn't be sure. I spurred my horse and started towards Grant's Pass. A little way into the pass, with steep walls on both sides of the narrow canyon, I saw... Well, there were six of them. All Texas Rangers. My brother was among them. Even the horses those men had been riding were shot down by the vicious killers from the protection of the rocks at the top of the cliff. There was so, no sign of life in the pass. I realized that none of those men could be alive, and yet I, I had to be sure. I examined them. They were dead, all but one. There was one man, terribly wounded, unconscious, in whom there was still a spark of life. I tried to dress his wounds. I tried to force water from a canteen between his lips. I even tried to get him on my horse, but he was too heavy. I couldn't lift him. He, too, must have died soon after I left to try to send help to him. Texas had suddenly become a place I couldn't stand. In the hills, the rocks, the valleys which I'd so loved, I now saw only a hiding place for murderers. The ranches had become a lure for cattle thieves. The very streams and springs of good water had chained to things I hated because they gave refreshment to men like those who killed my brother and his friends. I can never return to Texas, to any part of the West. The story you've told is a strange one. Strange? There's nothing strange about it, Mr. President. I'm only one of the countless people who've had an experience like that. But the others have stayed to fight the things that aren't right. Well, perhaps... 
perhaps because they didn't love the country as I did. My hatred of it became as deep as my love had been. You said you rode away to get help for the man who still lived. Did you find that help? Not in time. Then he did die? I don't know. The men who shot him must have returned to finish their work. It wasn't until the next day that men could get back to Grant's Pass. They found that graves had been dug, the dead men buried. I see. I told you a moment ago that your story was a strange one. Let me tell you another story which will explain why I made that statement. Oh? A short time ago, I sat in my railroad car outside of St. Louis. It was long after dark. With me was a man who had ridden secretly to talk to me. The story he told was as strange as yours. He, too, was a member of a small band of Texas Rangers who were ambushed. He told me that... The bullets didn't kill me, Mr. President. I recovered consciousness in a cave with food and water beside me. I wondered who had taken me there and who had brought the food. Well, while I lay on the ground trying to remember what had happened, an Indian came into the cave. Me, Tonto. Tonto. Tonto, did you say? Not right. When I was a boy, I knew an Indian boy named Tonto. Me, Tonto. You, the same one. I. You brought me here to this cave. Not right. Me find you hurt bad, wound plenty bad, but you get well, get strong again. Someone bandage your wound. Someone stop bleeding. Save your life. Tonto, there were others, friends of mine. Five of them. Did they survive? All of the ranger, dead. All of them? That's right. Then, then I... You, only ranger left now. You, alone. Alone? Ranger. Tonto, I'm going to get those men who ambushed us. Oh, you get strong first. It take long time. You unconscious all night. The others. What did you do with them? Me make grave. Make six grave. Six graves? Ah, uh, that outlaw think you dead too. But you not dead. You wear a mask. You not let outlaw know you're not dead. And then you catch outlaw. I'll do it, Tonto. I'll wear a mask. No one will know who I am. Let them think all six of those rangers have... have gone west. There'll be one who's still riding. I'll have no name. My name is beneath the mound of earth you built beside the graves of my friends. I'll just be... The Lone Ranger. That man recovered his health and strength. He rode from out of nowhere, his face covered by a mask. He carried out the pledge he made and ran every last one of those outlaws to earth. He kept Tonto as his side, riding to where he could serve justice, relentlessly pursuing criminals in all parts of the West. People began to talk about his deeds of daring. He called his white horse Silver, and his thrilling cry of... Came known from border to border from the Mississippi to the ocean. And the Lone Ranger is still riding. The Lone Ranger? I, I never dreamed. A friend of your brother. You are the one who saved his life. I, I, I didn't know that. Nor did I. I'm sorry you won't accept. I, I do accept. I want to go back to Texas. I want to help the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. It was some time after the meeting at the White House that the Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding across the open country in the direction of Mustang Mag's ranch. Another minute and we'll be with Mustang Mag, Tonto. <laughs> Plenty good to see her again. I've been wondering how she and Missouri have been getting on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there she is, standing in front of her house. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. She sees us now. She's waving. <laughs> you know her as a friend, too, don't you, Silver, old boy? Steady, boy. Steady, oh, Silver. Scout, old fella. Oh. Hi there. Well, if this ain't a sight for sore eyes. Get yourselves off them saddles and come here where my old eyes can see something good to look at for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mustang Meg. Certainly good to see you. Well, doggone it all, I begun to think you clean forgot about me. Missouri was wondering another day if you'd turn up soon. Get off of that paint there, Tonto. Oh, he Land off. sakes, the two of you as welcome as the flowers in spring. Come on inside, I got some prime side meat. You both look plumb tired out. We've been traveling over a lot of territory, man. Oh, you look it. So them horses look it. You better stay here a few days. And... Well, look. Silver's catch sight of his son over in the grazing corral. <laughs> He's looking at you. All right, Silver. Go ahead. <laughs> that horse knows as much as a human. More than some humans, I know. Did you see the way he looked at you to get permission to run over yonder? Yes. How's the cold doing, man? Oh, first rate. Finest horse I've ever seen. Oh, shucks. There's Missouri's coming. He's seen you now, and I wanted to have a few words with you alone. <laughs> Missouri, come on, run, eh? Hi there. <laughs> the Lone Ranger and Tonto. I'll be a sword of horn bill of an eight. Jiminy Christmas, if it ain't my partners. How are you, Missouri? <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> How are you, Tonto? <laughs> Me glad to see you, Missouri. Now, Missouri, uh, Missouri, I want a word with you before you start talking too much. Those two have been traveling hard, and they've got to stay here for a while and rest up. They sure should. It's doggone tough that they can't. What do you mean, they can't? They're going to. And ain't a thing in the world to stop them. Uh, but me... I say there ain't a thing in the world to stop them, Missouri, and that's that. Now, blast your buttons. Don't argue the point. Well, I wasn't figuring to argue Mag. Oh, That'll do. I figured the way that man had come here spoke that it was mighty... Listen, Listen to me, you addle-brained rooster. Ain't nothing more important than keeping the Lone Ranger fit and strong. The lad needs a couple of days. Maybe rest. after he's talked with Leech, he oh. can come back. No, no, May! You. Uh, don't you hit me with that stove wood! Oh, well. The old fools let the cat out of the bag now. Well, who is Leech? Oh, I may as well tell you the whole of it. But you got to come inside the house to listen. I'll get some food started. And as for you... But, Meg, I didn't do nothing. Sure, you've got no more brains than this hunk of firewood. Here! Got the fire to go on before I bend it around your neck. Yes, sir. Hey, let's hear about it. How did Leach know we'd come here? Oh, I don't know much about it. A stranger come through here a couple of weeks ago, and he said that Mr. Leach was powerful anxious to see the Lone Ranger, and that there was all fired important things he had to tell you. You don't know him, do you? Leach? No, I don't. Mm, Tonto not know him. Well, maybe he's a newcomer to town. Anyhow, he's there in that house the Brewsters used to live in, and that's all there is to it. I figured you'd light out of here as soon as you heard about it, and I wasn't going to tell you for a couple of days. Thanks for your interest, Mag, but you're right. Huh? We are going to, uh, to light out. I want to know why this man Leach is so anxious to talk to me. And they figured that sooner or later you'd turn up you here... You still. You already talked too much. Yes. Mag, is there anything else that I should know? Oh, you got it all now, but drat it, do be careful. I will. I think we'll drift into town disguise and learn something about Leach before we call on him. Well, you don't have to go to town right now. You'll wait long enough to sit down to a hot meal, can't you? Yes, Mag. We'll go into town this evening. Leach? Yeah, the poor critter. He's just hanging on by willpower. Now, what do you mean by that, bartender? Hanging on by willpower? Well, that's what the boys say. He's getting weaker all the time. Can't seem to eat nothing or sleep or anything else. You know what his trouble is? No, he sort of mysterious like. I mean, no one can tell what's ailing him. He ain't been here very long. I see. He ain't been able to get up from his bed for the past week. Half the time he can't even talk so as to make sense. And does he live alone? Yep. Well, can't the doctor tell what's the matter with him? All the doctor can say is that Leach is burning hot with fever. Goes there every morning. Leach won't have him no other time. Why not? Well, I don't know. Just can't take him, I reckon. Yeah, but look at his, stranger. You know Leach? Maybe old friend of his. I've never heard of him before I came here. And why are you interested in him now? Because I never heard of a case like this. What'd you say your name was, stranger? I didn't say. 
Well, what is it then? Oh, call me whatever comes handy. Now, thanks for the information. <laughs> Doggone odd the way that hombre acted. I wonder just what there is about that fellow Leach. <laughs> I know it's just a little way to where Leach is living. He'll be there shortly. Ah, him hang on to life to talk to Lone Ranger. What him got to tell? Someone must have known that we come this way more often than any other. Someone know we planned a mag in Missouri. Yes, Leach couldn't have known that. He must have been getting information from someone here in town. Wonder who that would be. Uh, may not know. I couldn't find anyone who knew Leach very well. That right. We'll stop in the shadows over there, and I'll take the disguise off and get my mask on. And we'll see what Leech has to tell the Lone Ranger. Yeah, that's a house, all right. Someone said he kept a little oil lamp burning all night. We go in there? Hunter, I think we can walk right in. Looks to me as if the door is partly open. Oh, that right. Come on, then. You hear that moan? Ah. Come on in. Leach, Leach, where are you? Room in there. Who's here? Leach, I was told by Mustang Mag in Missouri that you were anxious to see me. Hanging on. Long time, waiting here. What's the matter? Lone Ranger. I'm waiting for the Lone Ranger. I'm right beside your bed. Here, I'll turn up the lamp. No. No, Lee. Lalo will examine you. Sometimes he can cure sick people as well as a doctor can. No, not now. Wait. Uh, let me take a look. Not now. Morning. Doctor always comes in the morning. Well, uh, why did you want to see me? I want to see the Lone Ranger. I'm right here. Wait. Can't talk now. Wait, talk in morning. All right, then. It's mighty important. The morning. I'll be back in the morning, then. Wait. Yes? Don't... Don't leave me. But you said Don't it. go away from here. You stay in the other room. Maybe I won't live till morning. Now, look here, Leach. No, I wait. That... Let me speak. If I feel that I'm going out, I'll call. Then I'll tell you what's on my mind. Otherwise, we'll talk in the morning. I'm stronger in the morning. Very well, then. Tell and I'll spend the night in the other room. Good. Now, come on, Tonto. Don't touch me. What's the matter? King of Sabi. He only put hand on forehead. That all, Tonto, do. We'll leave him alone, Tonto. Come on. This is a strange situation, Tonto. Uh, plenty strange. Me put hand on forehead. Forehead not hot. Forehead cool. Then you don't think he had a fever? No, me not think so. Well, we'll lose nothing by humoring him for a few hours. We left the horses where they'll be all right until morning. Ah. Uh. We might as well get some rest while we're here. I'll spend the night here in this chair. Me here on floor. It's good to relax. I can't figure Leech out at all. Mm, plenty big puzzle. What was that? That door, house. How did it happen to close like that? Me not know. Might have been the wind. No, no. No wind tonight. Well, doesn't matter. Maybe we make light in this room, huh? No need to, Tonto. Tonto, hear that? Ah, tap on window. Me go look. See anything out there? No. I'll have a look outside. Do not see anyone? No, I... Here, what's this? What you find there? Look here, Tonto. I found this note just inside the door. Kimasabi, right on the other side of the house. Whoever it is, they wanted to be sure we got this note. Look up the fire there. Get enough light for me to read it. There seems to be a night of strange happenings. That'll do, Tonto. I can make it out now. What note say? If you value your life, don't let Leach leave the house tonight. Who write note? Oh, I don't know. It looks like a girl's handwriting. Mighty fine writing. Well educated. I'm going to have a quiet look into Leach's room. I'd like to know what this note means. Watch the floor, not make squeak. I'll be careful. Leach. You, what? What are you doing there? I... Air. Gotta have air. Be all right out of doors. Here, let me help you. Oh, thanks. I'll lean on you a little. What were you doing in the corner of the room? I was confused. Couldn't find the door. Dizzy. 
I'll be all right outdoors. Just leave me alone. Can you turn up lights? No, no, my eyes. Just let me out of doors. If you value your life, don't let Leech leave the house tonight. Leech, you're too weak to go out of the house. We'll put you back in that bed. No, no. Let me go. Here, you're stronger than you acted a minute ago. I'll show you now. Stand back. I've got a gun. I'm plenty strong now. Better change in you, Leech. Turn that light up, Toto. Uh, let me fix it. No, you don't. You stand still. Keep it heavy. Here, blast some powder in this corner. So you plan to blow us up? That's what I planned. As a last resort, I suppose you'll shoot us. I didn't figure to risk being tried for murder, but if that's the only way to get rid of you, I'll do it. Maybe the explosion will destroy the evidence. Who hired you to do this, Leach? That's none of your business. Well, if you're going to shoot us, you might at least satisfy our curiosity. I'll tell that... you just this. You thought the Black Arrow Legion was licked, didn't you? Well, it ain't. It's going to be stronger than ever before. That's what I wanted to be sure of. Now, Leach, I'm slapping leather. Oh, my God! All right, Toto, step on that fuse now. Toto, fix it. All right, you pulled that lightning drawer. You shot my gun away. Right, and now I'm they going to... They say you never shot to kill. Well, this time, mister, you'll shoot to kill. You won't get me. I'm going out that window. You told us what we wanted to know. I'm going, mister, and you'll follow at your own peril. Here, Redskin, take this. That's all right, Toto. I want to see where he leads us. Come on, after him, outside. Get up there. This way. Don't risk following me, mister. We risked death before this. Hip. After him, Toto. Get him up, scow. I'll sell just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.